Welcome back to the channel. This is Trendy Storm, and you are watching second part of What if Kid Naruto was denied to be a ninja but still overpowered? If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Now, wasting no more time, let's start the story. Shadow clone Naruto from Daku was currently at Naruto Sama's secret place. He had an average sized sketchbook in one hand and a pencil in the other. He was carefully drawing a butterfly flying in the wind with tree leaves floating around it. He changed the picture a little by making the old trees lean ever so slightly towards the butterfly, as if they were watching the tiny bug move. Drawing was one of the few things the real Naruto did for fun when he wasn't working with seals or helping wave country. He also drew pictures from his imagination. The clone exactly imitated the real Naruto by keeping his back straight and his face blank. He breathed in slowly so as not to move his hand, and he breathed out lowly as well. The butterfly he was drawing had long since flown away, so he was drawing it from memory. The clearing was full of Daku water clones that were hiding and keeping a close eye on him and his surroundings. The real Naruto had said that he would be back in about a week, which meant that he would have to be replaced as Naruto all the time so that he didn't just disappear if a stray weapon hit him. The Chunin exams he had to go to two days ago were pretty boring, and he made sure to tell the Hokage that. The most interesting thing that happened was when the case cage's son almost killed a leaf shinobi, Lee, Sai showed ninjutsu and taijutsu skills no gen in his age was supposed to have, and Hanada and Neji fought, if you want to call it that. Naruto would say it was a fancy death sentence that didn't happen. When he saw that Neji's attacks were getting more and more deadly and Hanada was getting weaker and weaker, he was forced to remember that the pale-eyed, weak-hearted girl was an important part of Naruto's plans, even if he didn't know what that part was yet. So Naruto had to step in. But the fact that she kept looking at him made him wonder what was going on. Hanada was on her knees and looking up pitifully at Neji. She didn't do anything to stop his killer blow until. A silver rope shot out of the box where people watched Naruto and wrapped around Neji's neck. He took the rope out of a paper he had in his pocket. The rope was one of the best things the real Naruto ever made. He needed the real Daku steel eye magnifying glass to look at the rope and draw tiny seals on each thread. The paintbrush was too big, and using just one hair would slow him down, so he had to use a technique he hadn't used much before. His chakra was used. In the Fuinjutsu scroll he was given, chakra exercises were also stressed, and he had practiced leaf spinning and senban balancing with his fingers. He was good at the second exercise, but not the first. He had to work hard to make the leaves spin, no matter how many there were. He then did tasks for each element. Water and air were the only ones that came to him more easily than the others, so he was right to think that those were his affinities. He did a pretty good job of separating and directing his chakra. So, he used his water affinity chakra to draw custom seals on each thread of rope, then twisted them back together. This is how he made his snake rope. Even though he had to add seals to make sure it wouldn't break, it was still a great idea. The real snake rope was with the real Naruto. The one that Naruto had was the first prototype. He could only make it longer by adding more chakra, but he wanted to save his chakra for other things. He flicked his hand and pulled the Hayuga back. When the boy kept trying to hit the ropes, he rolled his eyes. The judge looked up at him with angry eyes, then gave the match to Neji and kicked out Hinata. The boy with the blonde hair shrugged and pulled out his silver weapon. The rope slowly unwound from around Neji's neck, freeing the boy with the purple face. When the other Junin jumped down to save the girl, they didn't understand how a child who couldn't walk could save the Hyuga princess faster than them. Hinata looked up at him with what he could call gratitude and a little bit of respect, and Neji. Before he left the field, Neji glared at him in a calm way. At the moment, he was trying to make the drawing look as real as possible by adding shadows, stray beams of light, complex designs that most people wouldn't notice, and even the butterfly's wings faint after images. He was satisfied with what he got. What's up, Gaki? When a pencil mark went into a tree, Naruto tried not to groan. He took out an eraser and carefully rubbed out the mistake, making sure to say, hello, to the person who had bothered him without turning around. Is that how you talk to me? The man expected him to turn his head towards him and maybe even beg at his feet, but Naruto was too good for that. He was, after all, the man who makes women swoon and men jealous. Jiraiya, you are great and brave. I talk to everyone this way, and you are no different, he said, still gently rubbing out the evil line that was ruining his picture of peace. 
Can you tell me what you want, Jiraiya-sama? He could almost feel the man's shoulders sinking. Old man Hokage told me that you know a lot about seals. Why do you ask? I do my best. Isn't that clear? I, the gallant Jiraiya, the strongest of the three legendary Sanin, the Toad Summoner, and the author of the best-selling book in all of the elemental nations, am here to give you some advice. If you please me enough, I might even take you on as my apprentice. He didn't get the answer he wanted because Naruto was still cleaning up the line and trying not to make any mistakes. I can even add the Toad Summoning contract, he said. I'm fine with where I am in Fuenjutsu, but thank you for coming, Jiraiya-sama. Ah come on Gaki. I'm here to help. He walked up to the boy and put his arms across his chest. And I've admitted that, but I've also said I'm happy where I am. He didn't put down the sketch pad to look at the man. Instead, he traced over the parts he had erased. Oh yeah? Where are you right now? Level 9. What? I'm on level 8.5. How did you get so far up? Years of studying with nothing but studying. But I've been in school my whole life. No, the history books say you've been studying Fuenjutsu since you graduated from the academy, and considering you have the most. Unsavory of hobbies, you haven't done enough with your seal work. Hey. Let me tell you, my stories explain how the female body works. You should read them sometime, he said to defend his book series. I tried reading it, the man said, but I was sorely disappointed because 98% of the book was about sex, and I'm not interested in that right now. But I'd have to say that it was very graphic. That's all right with me. Can you explain why two Hyuga are following you around? Jiraiya summed up that the child didn't even flinch because he already knew. During the exams, I saved one and almost strangled another, Naruto hummed. Jiraiya-sama, you can go back to the Hokage and tell him you didn't pass. The Toad teacher didn't show that he was surprised that the old Hokage had sent him, but he did sigh and ask, are you sure you don't want a Toad summoning? I wouldn't need it. I can't fight well because I can't walk well, and I don't have anyone close enough to me to send messages to. The man nodded and walked away, his pride a little less strong because the child he didn't want to raise was already smarter than him. He didn't think that Minato and Kashina would die the next day after making him Naruto's godfather. He didn't see, Naruto, nod to his back or a black blur follow him. Then, Naruto, flicked his pencil holding hand to where the two Hyuga were hiding. Two blurs dropped behind them and put them a few feet in front of, Naruto, before they could use their Byakugan to see who had attacked them so quickly. Naruto wasn't too worried about breaking up a fight between the two Hyuga because they weren't too close to each other. I thought I told you and, by extension, the rest of your team, Hanada-san, not to come back here again. When it came to the shy Hyuga, he had been talking to his boss's boss, and now they knew what to do with the girl. The real Naruto wasn't necessarily using Hanada, though. What he had in mind would help both Hanada and him, and by extension, the rest of the new small village, Country Alliance. I I know, Naruto-kun. I just came to thank you for saving me, she bowed, and, Naruto, looked up from his drawing and nodded. It was no problem, he told Neji, who was, as expected, scowling at him. Now, why are you here, Neji-san? I came to find out who you were, but all I see is a crippled little girl doomed to stay in that chair for the rest of her life. Hanada gasped at his insult. She thought, Naruto, would fight back, but, Naruto, just nodded and stood up, which surprised her. I can stand and walk pretty well, he said as he leaned back in his chair. That goes against what you call, fate. He leaned back and said, I made something that helped me walk, but only for a short time. Neji crossed his arms and said, it doesn't matter, you're still weak. There were two ways to respond to this clear taunt, he could ignore it and wave the man away, or he could use the seals he had at his disposal to hurt him. He picked the invisible third choice, which was to troll back. If I was weak, then how did I stop you from killing her yesterday? I wasn't ready, and she won't be so lucky next time. I don't think so. It doesn't make sense that you hate a girl who couldn't even hurt a fly, Neji-san. Go home and think about your life. You have no right to say that, Neji gritted his teeth and clenched his hand. And you have no right to pick on a defenseless girl, unless you get off, that kind of thing, Naruto, waved his hand and sniffed quietly. If you do, I suggest you go to therapy. It's not healthy. He smirked at Neji, knowing that the boy was just a few insults away from attacking him. The Hyuga boy growled, 
I have a good reason to go after Hanada, you wheelchair boy, and then he smiled proudly. Oh, that's clever, Neji. You used my small disability to your advantage, Naruto, said in a cool voice. My question for you, Neji, is why are you still here? Or do you also get off on making fun of boys who are disabled? Hanada hid her laugh in her sleeve. She let out a small giggle and bit the fabric of her sleeve. Naruto looked at her confused for a moment, then back at the person he was insulting. Poor Hayuga had a red face and steam coming out of his ears. I do not get off anything. Uh huh, sure you don't, Naruto, said with a roll of his eyes and a playful hand motion. You should go train, I heard you were going to fight the Uchiha in the second round. That's true, I don't need to waste any more of my time talking to lowlifes like you in this. Weak excuse of a Hayuga, he said, lifting his nose in the air as he walked away. If you ever get in the way of one of my fights again, I will kill you. Whatever, the boy said with a short frown, then straightened up and walked away. Now, Hanada-san, why are you here again? Hanada's face lit up as she looked at the person she liked under a metaphorical magnifying glass. I I I. Girl, spit it out. I I came to say thank you for 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 and to apologize for my teammate because his behavior was uncalled for, she stuttered and raised her voice. A, it was nothing, Naruto, decided to finish what she was saying. She then shook her head uncomfortably in front of him and said, yes? Uh, Inoa, how did you do that? Rope thing? The clone pursed his lips and thought about lying to her and telling her to go away, but he decided against it. If he could do seals as well as the Hokage and more than half of the Anbu force, why couldn't he tell her? She frowned as she thought, Fuinjutsu is mostly about using kanji to do things that ninjutsu or any other kind of jutsu can't. Is that how you can walk or how you beat Kiba? She asked, nodding. Naruto, nodded. After that, there was a long pause, during which Hanada nervously bit the corner of her mouth. Naruto, groaned quietly in frustration, yes? Is that how you got to be so tough? The clone raised an eyebrow and said, I mean, you're so cool and confident, and you're not afraid of anything. Hanada-san, you've only known me for about a month. I know, she said with sagging shoulders. He chose to make her laugh by saying, Fuinjutsu was how I dealt with my loneliness and depression, and I got so into it that I found it really interesting. You could say I'm strong because I love seals and know how to use them. So. If I want to be strong, I need to give myself to something. She took a step back and bowed, thank you, Naruto-san. What for? For your words, she said, and turned to leave. Hanada-san? She turned around quickly and said, yes. A little too loudly. Do you really want to become strong? She slowly nodded. The clone then opened a wooden chair and told her to sit down. Let me help you then, it said. Also, Konoha could use a Hayuga cage. As well as the new partnership between small villages and countries. In Wave Country, all of the small village leaders met in the office of the Wave Leaders to talk about how to make their villages stronger. They talked about giving Hidden Fang money, materials, and people to build a train station that would connect Hidden Fang to Hidden Marsh and Hidden Chill, which was the farthest town. Hidden Waterfall was closest to Hidden Wave and Hidden Smoke, and Hidden Smoke was closest to Hidden Fang. This meant that if the train was finished, it would be much easier to talk to each other and move people and things. Naruto had already brought three fully capable engineers from the village to help build the tracks and trains. He also created a powerful clone of Daku to help lift big things and use his knowledge of metal and woodwork. Kitsuen sent his best smoke release users and some of his best blacksmiths to melt the iron. Shibuki, Tu, and Yumi all gave money and things to help. Just as they were about to talk about how to speed up ninja training in Wave, the office doors were thrown open and a demon brother was seen hyperventilating. What does this all mean? Samsado screamed in anger. Humble apologies to the village leaders, but a group of unknown ninja just tried to get inside the walls. The seals worked, and they were turned away. The seals protecting Wave worked because every citizen's blood was keyed in. This meant that all newborn and dead people would have to be registered in periodically. All guests got temporary tattoos on their wrists that only lasted as long as they stayed. When you add in all the gates and guards who gave guests painless tattoos, Wave was very well protected against being invaded. The only thing left to do was figure out how to make the seals take an enemy chakra and use it against them, like a virus. The seals create an active field of lightning that repels those who don't meet the requirements. 
This depends on how much chakra the infiltrator uses, so Wave wouldn't be responsible for the death of a civilian who got his tattoo rubbed off or a newborn who wasn't registered. Naruto wanted to learn how to make the seals tell the difference between citizens and shinobi so that they would punish shinobi very harshly but only push back civilians. Have they already been caught? Naruto asked quietly, well? He was holding his head up with his right hand and tapping his left hand on the arm of his wheelchair. In a single second, the one demon brother looked at Daku, who was standing guard behind the boy, and then at the other village leader's guards, who were also standing behind them. This boy must be the great master that Daku was talking about. They are running back to where they came from, and Haku is giving chase. What about Zabuza? Naruto asked, knowing everything that was going on in Wave and who worked for him. The other village leaders and their guards were only mildly interested in what was going on. He and my brother are on a mission and won't be back until tomorrow. The blonde boy rubbed his chin and thought for a moment before saying, even though Haku is a high chunin and an expert hunter ninja, I still need those ninjas to be brought in because they have made me curious. I want you, Daku, to go with Haku and help him bring all the ninjas back alive. If it's all right with you, Naruto Dono, Kitsuen said, interrupting Wave Country's 12-year-old boss, Naruto waited a moment and nodded for the big man to go on. I suggest we each send a bodyguard after your intruders, the big man said. Since we are now allies, a breach in your security is also a breach in our security. That's right, Yumi said. I also think our ninjas will feel more like a team if they learn to work together. All in favor? Naruto said, then it's agreed, and all the leaders raised their hands. Go after them and bring them back alive, the guards behind each village leader, including Daku, were told. They did as they were told and left the office. Haku, who knew how to use ice release, ducked under a thrown shuriken and threw three ice senbon at the person who was attacking him. The person in the plain mask threw a kanai and caught the ice senbon in a very amazing way. The ninja turned around and ran back into the bush with his team close behind him. Behind his mask, the ice user glared at the intruder and was about to go after the ninja when he suddenly turned around and held an ice senbon to the neck of a fat ninja who was wearing a gas mask. The ninja wore mostly black and gray clothes. He had on a big black junin flak jacket and plain gray undershirt and pants. He had a black dagger in a holster at his foot, just above his gray ninja sandals. The person raised his hand to show that he was on Haku's side, but the ice user didn't let down his guard. Stand down Haku. Daku-sama? The ice user let go of the senbon and let it melt. As Daku and four other strangely dressed ninja ran out of the bush, he shuffled back and asked, I'm sorry to be rude, but what are they doing here? They were definitely guards for the boss. The female ninja from Hidden Fang spoke before the dark shadow could. Our leaders decided that we should join the hunt, she said. She had brown hair that reached her waist, tanned skin, and sharp facial features. On the side of her lips, small teeth stuck out. She wore a flak jacket that was dark red and had white fangs on the shoulders and sides. She was wearing ninja pants that reached her ankles and had a long, bent sword at her side. She only wore a vest under her flak jacket, which showed off her slim muscles and the three fang tattoos on her left shoulder. The protection for Hidden Chill said, we should move quickly, because they're getting away. He had short, shockingly white hair, white eyebrows, and cold blue eyes that stared in the general direction of where the invaders had run. His voice was strange, like he was speaking through a tube. His flak jacket was cold blue, like his eyes, and he wore a plain white trench coat that barely touched the ground. He was wearing all black ninja pants with strange-looking shuriken on both sides of his hips. Daku pointed silently at the Fang Kanochi and told it to find the intruders. The woman gave a sharp howl and jumped into the bush, followed by the other ninjas. Back in Wave Country, where the call came from, the Fang Wolf friends howled in answer. Naruto looked at Samsado with interest while they were still in the meeting room talking about things and making plans. The man gave him a sharp smirk and said, the hunt starts. The Fang ninja sniffed the air and flew through the trees without hitting the ground. Behind her, the other ninjas ran as fast as they could. How close are we, Billy San? Asked the hidden Marsh Kanochi, who was almost right next to the Fang Kanochi. She had short, straight black hair, and her eyes were as dark as coal. She was skinny, and the green and black battle dress she wore under her dark green Junin flak jacket made that even more obvious. She wore short, tight trousers under her robe. The slit on her right leg made it hard to see her trousers. Billy said in a low voice, here. 
He then ran through some woods, tackled a faceless shinobi, and hit him against a tree. Then she hit her head against the ninja's mask and watched grimly as the ninja passed out. Daku beat his own opponent almost as easily. He took the time to watch how his opponent fought and saw that it was similar to the strong fist taijutsu style. He blocked two hits with his hand and then gave his opponent a knee to the chin, which broke the mask. As his opponent was in the air, he shot out his arm and grabbed a shuriken that was aimed at him. He then threw it back at the ninja, hitting the right leg. He moved his hand forward again and pulled his own opponent out of the air. He slammed him into the ground, and a finger poke to the neck knocked him out. The hidden chill shinobi did a short series of hand seals, water release, water drill. He repeated the common jutsu over and over again, but he made the most of it by pushing his opponent towards the hidden smoke shinobi. Smoke release. Smoke blanket, the ninja said, and the gas mask he was wearing started pouring thick, black smoke onto the helpless invader. The ninja with no facial features started hacking at his hand, and blood shot out of his mouth, nose, and ears. He fell to the ground a few seconds later after the smoke release user gave him a quick chop to the neck. His tag team partner, the chill shinobi, gave him a fist bump. The chill shinobi bent down and tied up their prisoner, while the smoke shinobi stood still and watched the other guardians deal with their opponents. The waterfall shinobi moved quickly to avoid his opponent's sword hits, even though he didn't have a sword of his own to defend himself with. No one thought someone with his size could move so quickly. He looked at how the unknown ninja fought quickly and was impressed that he didn't see any holes in his attack. He did notice that the guy was a chunin because he couldn't make his sword move faster. He dodged another sword blow and hit the stranger's arm with his right fist. This broke the elbow and made the stranger drop his sword. Even though the person had a broken arm, he kept attacking the man, throwing blow after blow at him. Your determination is admirable, Shinobi-san, the man said as he leaned back from a wide kick and kicked the leg that stayed on the ground, breaking the ankle. When the waterfall ninja grabbed the victim's throat and ripped off his mask, the victim wobbled on his one leg and gurgled in pain. The man put his hand in his mouth and grabbed his tongue when he saw the mad look in his eyes. Kinky. Billy Wolf whistled. The waterfall shinobi rolled his eyes and said, he has a suicide seal on his tongue, and he was trying to use it. Since Haku didn't have anyone to fight, he threw a senbon at the unknown ninja's neck, which knocked him out. The marsh kanochi knocked her opponent off her feet and kicked her breast into the ground, making a small crater. Oops, I guess I did too much, she said. He bent down and felt the ninja's pulse. When he felt a weak beat, he breathed a sigh of relief and said, don't worry, she's alive. The chill shinobi replied with snark, are you saying that to us or to yourself? Whatever, she said, tying up her helpless opponent and carrying her on her back with the help of the other bodyguards. Daku said, let's go back to wave, and he jumped into the trees. Did anyone else see him fight? The fat shinobi named Smoke asked, I certainly didn't. Daku-sama is very fast and very violent. He knocked out his opponent and hurt the one you were fighting, Smoke Shinobi-san, the ninjas said as they ran through the forest back home. Sounds like a challenge, Billy said with a grunt. He beat an A-rank ninja who was missing and held his own again. Asuma Serutobi and Kakashi of the Sharingan. He beat Asuma Serutobi and Hitaki Kakashi? The chill shinobi's eyes grew wide, and he lost his cool. Even the tough Billy was just as surprised as the rest of his team. Both of them are a rank shinobi. Daku didn't seem to be close enough to hear them, so he just kept tree jumping. He fought them until they couldn't move, and he only gave up when his chakra ran out. I saw everything. The group kept tree hopping in silence, giving the security of the quiet wave leader a little more respect as they fought to a standstill against two young legendary people didn't hear about a rank shinobi very often. Both a rank shinobi had special skills in jutsu. Kakashi had his sharingan, and Asuma had his trench knives and a wind jutsu that was almost unbeatable. For a shinobi to be able to do that, they would need a lot of training and knowledge. Something that Naruto's dark shadow had and that was still growing and changing. The marsh Kanochi thought to herself, interesting. A day later, hard, sharp thunks could be heard near where Team 8 normally trained in Naruto's special clearing. One, thunk, two, thunk, three, thunk, and, four, thwack. Again. One, the banging sounds began again. If someone looked into the cause, they would be very surprised by what they saw. Because Hinata was making all the noise. She was staring shyly at a training fake while throwing Juken strikes at four major Tenketsu areas. 
Her face was red and her seal was strengthened so it wouldn't break easily. This was supposed to be a Hyuga secret, but Hanada thought that a wounded boy wouldn't be able to do anything with it. She thought. She squatted down in a sloppy way and poked the dummy's breast with her index and middle fingers, then its kidney, then its liver, and finally its neck with a sharp poke. It had been a day since, Naruto, had talked to him about how to get stronger, and, Naruto, was really hoping that his boss's boss wasn't wrong to put so much faith in the girl. Her stances were sloppy, her punches were weak, she couldn't keep a straight face, and the list goes on. The clone didn't want to train the young girl like the real Naruto had trained Daku because she would die of tiredness, but he was seriously thinking about it. He gave up and broke his calm expression with a sharp frown. Tell me, Hanada, why are we here if you're not ready to get better? Team 8 was on break until after the tests, so they only met for a 3-hour workout and a light spar before going home. I do want to make myself better, she stood up straight and blushed a little when she looked at the blonde clone. See, that's what I mean. You can't focus on just one thing. I'm not impressed. Hanada's ears rang like funeral gongs as she looked at the clone, trying not to gasp too loudly. You have a lot of potential, but you are too soft. I can be tough. Are you telling me that or are you telling yourself that? It makes me wonder what you've been doing with your team since you joined. Flexibility exercises can only get you so far. You need to toughen your strikes, you need to have a clear mind, you need to increase your chakra levels, you need proper nutrition, you need to increase your speed, you need to increase your strength, you need to increase your confidence, you need a proper training schedule, you need to be focused. I am focused. The girl yelled, tightening her fist in anger at all the problems the boy had listed after she had spent half a day showing him what she had. Most of what was wrong with her life was shown by the blonde clone. The blonde clone was very surprised by her outburst. He leaned back a little and stopped in the middle of what he was saying. Even though he insisted that she needed to be as disappointed as possible. The real Naruto believed that the truth was cold and hard. Even though the girl's face was still red, it wasn't because she was ashamed. The clearing was quiet for a minute. The only sounds were birds chirping in the distance and Hanada's semi-angry deep breaths. Listen, Naruto sat up straight and wiped his face clean. I don't like wasting my time. The girl closed her eyes tightly and gritted her teeth. I'm going to give you one more chance to show me your skill, the one you already have, so I know where to start. She was still trying to get her heart under control, so her face was still red. I'm not putting you down. Start when you're ready. Hi, she said, and then she slowed down her heart rate, which made the redness on her cheeks harder to see. She pushed her right hand into the dummy's chest and jammed her fingers in there. Then, with her hand still in the dummy's chest, she spun around and jammed her fingers where a person's kidneys are usually found. She let go of the chest strike and hit where the liver was. At the same time, she let go of the kidney strike and drove her chakra-covered fingers halfway through the throat of the dummy. Hanada took a step back to look at what she had done and gasped for air through clenched teeth. The training dummy slowly fell over, making it look like she had killed it with her blows. What did I do? She was brought out of her thoughts when she heard slow clapping from next to her. Very good Hanada, much better than your first try, and I'll say I'm very impressed by your determination, the clone said. The girl didn't duck her head in shame because she knew this boy didn't like seeing weakness in any form. So, even though she was very red, she stood up straight and bowed slightly. Thank you Naruto-kun. When I am teaching you, you should call me sensei. Naruto sensei, she told herself to be correct. Naruto nodded and slowly moved his chair around the clearing. The girl made sure to stand up straight and keep her eyes on the dead dummy. Good, you're learning. We'll meet here every day until the end of the exams. If you do well enough, I'll keep training you after that, did I get that right? Hi Naruto sensei. Now, let's work on your stamina before we go any further, he said as he hovered over to her. In a flash, he tied her up with his snake rope, put weight seals on her feet and hands, and let her go. Something happened so quickly that the girl wasn't sure what it was. The seals I put on you are weight seals. With every pulse of chakra I send in from here, he tapped an arm on his wheelchair, her hands and feet felt a little heavier. The weight shall increase, he tapped it again, and her arms felt like they were going to pop out of their sockets. Start jogging to and from your team's training ground to here until I tell you to stop. Hinata couldn't remember the last time she carried so much weight at once. As she ran, 
Her legs shook from the strain, and her hands, which she kept up by her sides, were really burning from the strain. Naruto was now very impressed. She was using the seal at level 3, which meant she was lifting exactly 80 pounds, which was more than half of her own weight. That same day. Country Wave. The real Naruto asked the waterfall shinobi behind Shibuki, you said there were suicide seals on their tongues? The village leaders were walking down a tunnel under the wave leader's tower to get to where the root ninjas were being held in stillness by a seal. He was right in front, and Samsato was walking quickly next to him. Behind them were the other village leaders and their guards. Only three could go through at a time. Hi, two of them already turned it on when they woke up early. That's why Daku put them in stasis so they wouldn't die again. Now they had to deal with three strangers. All of the village leaders decided not to blame their bodyguards for the loss, since it was very surprising that a ninja could wake himself up after a perfectly performed neck chop and senbon to the neck. Even so, the guards, including Daku, were very sorry for failing. Then, they went into a wide room with stone walls and three hospital-style beds. The room was well lit, so there weren't too many shadows, and it was cool, but not too cold. The boy hung out by the bed on the far left side of the room, and the leaders of the town followed him to see what he would do. Naruto put on a pair of plastic gloves and looked at the root ninja, who was only wearing his shirt and trousers on the bed. The ninja's forehead was marked with the kanji for, deep sleep. The ninja was taking low, slow breaths to show that he was still very much alive. Daku pulled his wheelchair back, and the blonde seal master stood up. She gently opened the ninja's mouth. He snapped his fingers, and Daku came over and held the mouth open. Naruto pulled out the tongue and hummed as he looked at what he saw. Since the boy was the only local seal master there, he decided to tell the leaders what was going on. He has a very complex seal on his tongue, he said, tracing the seal with his pinky finger. No, I'm wrong. He has two seal complexes on his tongue. Two? I thought it was only possible to have one, two, the leader of Hidden Marsh, said out loud. The other leaders nodded to show that they were also wondering the same thing. I thought the same thing when I was a level 5 seal master. The scroll I learned from at the time showed me that a seal master who knows what they are doing can put up to a hundred seals together. He bent down and looked at the roof of the ninja's mouth and under his tongue, but found nothing. Samsado said, I can see how doing something like that must have risks. Yes, the seal master has to put together kanji that go well with each other. He has to be very careful with how he draws them or it could literally blow up in his face. The risks are always worth it, trust me. Shibuki asked. Are we to assume that you have used complex seals before? Many times. The seals that make my wheelchair move are complex, the seals that protect wave are complex and, might I add, very hard to crack, the seals that are tattooed on your wrists are very complex, and so on. The leaders watched as a kanji for, find, detect, lit up on his palm. He moved it slowly over the unconscious ninja's body and said, this seal on my hand is made up of four seals. After he used his chakra to make his seal detection seal, the seals on his palm merged together and were stacked on top of each other. People who didn't know much about the finer points of Fuenjutsu, or anyone with less than level 5 of skill in Fuenjutsu, found it hard to break complex seals. Yumi asked Naruto Dono, what seal complexes are on this ninja's tongue? She was fascinated by how interesting seals could be and how deep ninja art could go, deeper than anything she had ever seen. Note. A complex seal is made up of more than one seal, while a complex seal is just one seal. Since Fuenjutsu wasn't a secret art, Naruto was happy to answer their questions. There are three simple seals on his tongue, combined skillfully to make one complex seal, he said. The first is the basic storage seal, tuned only to store fire chakra, and the basic suicide seal, or cyanide seal, a seal I have only seen once and it was in a scroll I learned from, the labyrinth of seals. He turned off the detection seal on his palm and dug through his baggy trousers pockets. He pulled out a thin piece of paper and snapped his fingers. Daku then gently dropped a brush into his master's waiting hands and held out an ink pot for the boy to dip the brush in. What are you doing now, Naruto Dono? Yumi asked, leaning in slightly to look at what the boy was drawing. I'm drawing a seal I created to tell me what exactly is in a storage seal and, if I'm lucky, tell me what booby traps are in that seal. He pointed to the exposed chest of the unconscious ninja, stand back please, the leaders shuffled back two steps as the boy finished the seal with an expert flourish and wafted it over the storage seal twice, he then looked at the sheet of paper in his hand and pursed his lips, nothing threatening so far. 
he only has the essentials every ninja has to have on a mission. Spare clothing, spare kanai and shuriken, a nodashi, a spare mask, toiletry essa that seems to be about it. He tore the paper up and drew another one on another thin sheet of paper, waving it over the trap seal once this time. Daku stood ready to intercept any problem that arose. Just a highly powered explosive seal, it would probably detonate when I unseal it, it would probably take out a quarter of wave. Storage seals and trap seals were eerily similar, the difference being that trap seals threw, or detonated, anything sealed inside while storage seals only dropped whatever was inside. Naruto waved at the leaders to tell them to calm down, showing them without words that he wasn't going to blow them up. Naruto checked the other ninja's tongues and scanned their bodies to make sure they had the same seals. You said these people have secrecy seals on them, said Yumi, who was the most interested of the village leaders. Naruto answered her question with a positive hum as he looked at the seals on the first ninja's tongue again. Is there any way to break it or the whole seal complex so we can find out who sent them? The young blonde seal master didn't say anything for a while, only slowly nodding to himself. He then spoke up and said, I can break the fire storage seal and the suicide seal, but I've only seen the loyalty seal once or twice before. The boy scratched his chin and said, I'll have to break the seals in the order they are stacked. He took out his brush and drew a clean X on the first ninja's tongue. He. Samsato asked out loud, that quick? If I were a level 5 seal master, I would need a piece of paper or a scroll to draw out a seal to break the storage seal. But since I'm used to drawing miniature seals into small symbols, it's not that hard, he could see their respect for him growing by the second. He turned back to the ninja and gave Daku his brush. He ran his pointer finger over the next seal, which was the suicide seal. After that, he made a quick cutting motion, and his blue chakra broke the seal. Second seal down, he said. The leaders of the village and the bodyguards all applauded softly. Naruto gave them a small smile and a flourishing bow to make them laugh. For the last seal, which might have been the hardest and most dangerous to break, Naruto had Daku open the ninja's mouth a bit. He then raised his pointer finger again and traced the seal on the ninja's tongue. When he was done, he traced the seal backwards, and small drops of sweat appeared on his forehead. When he was done, he leaned back and looked at what he had done. His blue chakra was glowing over the loyalty seal, and the evil seal was glowing a soft green, which showed that the seal had been put there against the person's will. He took a deep breath and started going quickly through a very long chain of hand wraps. He closed his eyes to help him remember the chain. After the last seal, he opened his eyes and said, Hidden Art, Fuinjutsu, First Universal Whirlpool Seal Breaker. The air around the ninja's tongue moved, and then the ink from the loyalty seal melted into a puddle on the ninja's neck. Third seal down, Naruto said with a sigh of relief. Kitsuen yelled, Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And clapped his hands loudly. Naruto nodded. Now, he said, wiping his temples with a handkerchief because he wasn't yet tired enough to sit down. Who wants to question him? I think Kao should question him. He knows how to question people well, Yumi said after a short pause, pointing to her second bodyguard in a trench coat, both of her bodyguards wear trench coats. She looked at her other teammates to see if they had any objections, and when she didn't hear any, she signaled for the chill shinobi to come forward. Tu asked, still amazed at how easily the boy had broken the locks, how are we going to wake him up? To answer her question, Naruto just reached out and smacked the other ninja in the face, making the man's eyes pop open and his mouth make a painful wheeze. What in? He's all yours, Kao San, the leader of the wave said, taking a step back to stand with the other village leaders. Kao came up to the sleeping ninja in a lazy way. The sleeping ninja didn't have any obvious restraints, but he still couldn't get out of bed. The interrogator stared down at the ninja, who was still fighting in vain against chains he couldn't see. What is your name? He asked right away. I'd rather die than tell you anything, the person snarled. He clicked his tongue and looked horrified. My seals. Have been taken away, so you can talk if you want to. What is your name again? The ninja started to remember how he had been taken from the orphanage and made to do things he didn't want to do and kill people he didn't want to kill. He squeezed his eyes shut and tried to find the loyalty he had for his master until death, but he couldn't. Not a single thing. At that moment, he started to wonder if he really wanted to protect the person who had made him do all the terrible things he had done, killing the royal delegations from the lightning and earth countries in Whirlpool, making both power-hungry countries think the humble village was looking for trouble and starting an uprising for world dominance, poisoning the Uzumaki water supply with a slow-acting virus that ate chakra when he was a guest there. 
posing as a he had just finished the root program and was the best in his group. This was the first task his master gave him to prove himself. When he heard a polite cough, he opened his eyes. Well? His boss was a man who had a lot of power. He wouldn't be shocked if the man was found dead in his cell after he told the man everything he knew about him. He didn't know if his master was still his master. I don't know my name, but my master calls me Rat, Nazumi. He still had his eyes closed, hoping that his attackers would believe him. Should I expect your full cooperation? Asked Cow with a slow nod. Rat let out a big sigh and thought about his life. For the first time, he felt as old as he should have been. Maybe, if he told them what he knew and prayed for the best, he could stay alive a little longer. Just maybe. He nodded his head and said, yes, I'll help. Maybe that's why they called him Rat, because he would say anything to stay alive a little longer. Naruto gave a small grin that was barely noticeable to anyone but Daku, who was used to seeing his faceless master show a tiny bit of emotion. He snapped his fingers, and Daku gave him his wheelchair and sped down the tunnel, coming back with a scroll that had the chairs of the other village leaders. When everyone was comfortable and the bodyguards were in place at the corners of the room and behind the leaders, the blonde head of Wave signaled for Kao to start the interrogation. Let's start at the beginning, Rat San. Who sent you here to spy on us? A day before the end of the Chunin tests. Konoha. Hayuga Hiyashi looked down at his daughters with a serious face. When he said, I want you two to fight, their faces matched his exactly. He stared down at his oldest daughter Hanada with a stern look. He frowned and glared at her, expecting at least a little sweat to form on her forehead. He was shocked when she stood up straight in front of his judging eyes. Even so, he couldn't help but insult her. Hanada, you're a lost cause, but don't make a total fool of yourself. Since Hanada was now on a team, he could only train his daughters maybe once or twice a month, and since a month ago, his oldest daughter had become even more shy than usual. She woke up at 3 a.m., which her caretaker told him. She was too old for a caretaker, but her father still insisted she have one. She walked out of the Hyuga property very quietly, passing by Chunin guards who had been there for years. He had been told that he wouldn't see or hear from her again until two hours before noon, when her team would get together for training. After that, he told Ko to keep an eye on her, but whenever he saw her make a suspicious turn into a corner, strange things would happen. For example, the last time she ducked into a blacksmith weapon store, he got dizzy because kids were running past him and pulling his hands in different directions. Another time, a cart of watermelons came out of nowhere and fell on top of him. Then Hiyashi started to have real doubts about Ko. He sent out another member of the Hyuga branch, but he got the same results. Hanada would sneak back into the property around 8 at night, when she was exhausted and angry. When he saw what happened when you woke up an angry Hanada, he got goosebumps all over. Ko got hurt in his private parts, so he had to take a week off work. The worst part was that she didn't use soft punches to put the man down. With just one kick to the crotch, he was out of the game. Poor Ko, he thought to himself as he stood up and looked down at his unmoved daughter. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw his youngest daughter, Hanabi, looking at her older sister with obvious confusion. He had a lot of feelings for the girl. Since she was born, he had never told her off or scolded her, and he would admit that she was spoiled. Then Hanabi glared at her sister, who was now pursing her lips because she was bored. The child made a mean face. When the teacher said, get into your stances, the two girls turned quickly away from each other and took two steps back before turning to look at each other. Then, as one, they both bent down into the basic position of the gentle fist taijutsu style of the Hyuga clan. All goes. Start. The man yelled. Both of his girls Byakugan came to life as they did the necessary hand seals at the same time. Byakugan. Byakugan. Hanabi frowned a lot when her white, all-seeing eyes didn't notice the small tremor or faster heartbeat that her sister usually had. It was looking at a Nara boy sleeping and an Akamichi slowly eating at the same time. Something that made her feel very confused. She rushed forward and used a chakra fist to hit her sister in the stomach. This was how she usually ended fights with her sister, but this time something strange happened. Hanada turned away from the attack and, almost too quickly to see, stopped all of Hanabi's tenkatsu with his own. She was able to do this because her weight seals had brought each of her limbs down to 40 pounds. Even though it still slowed her down, she had to admit that she was much faster than before she started using weight seals. 
After her arm was turned into a useless sausage, the little girl flew past her and looked in shock at her sister, Hiyashi, doing the same thing. Her eyes couldn't find any genjutsu on her, and the only strange thing was the drawings on the backs of her hands and on the tops of her feet, she doesn't know much about fuenjutsu. Hanada moved too slowly and poked her attacker in the shoulder, which caused her body to sag. She then poked her twice in the stomach. Hanabi wobbled on her feet. With only half of her upper body shut off, she felt like she was already dead. Hanada did wait for the strike of retaliation, but the little girl was still in shock, her mouth wide open as she looked at her dead arm. Then it seemed like strikes were falling from the sky onto the younger girl. Before she knew it, she was a mess on the ground, gasping for air, and Hanada was still looking down at her with a blank expression. This made her angry. She tried hard to move, but it was clear that she couldn't. Hanabi, stand down. She won. Hiyashi never in a million years thought he'd say those words. He kept a wary eye on his quiet oldest daughter. The girl bowed to her opponent, who was foaming at the mouth and looking at him eagerly, which he wouldn't have seen if he wasn't an expert at reading tiny facial expressions. Her lips turned up a little and her head turned a little towards him. You may leave. Hi to Sama, and she walked out of the training ground without looking back at her crazy sister. Come back here and look at me like a lady. I wasn't ready. She fought fiercely. Get back here. Hiyashi didn't try to look amused. That's enough, Hanabi. We'll give you more training, so the next time you'll be ready. Hanada, meanwhile, ran right into training ground 8 as soon as her clan compound was out of sight. She then snuck through the trees to her blonde sensei's private place and yelled, Sensei. Naruto Sensei. She fell on her face and was panting like a racehorse before she got herself under control and stood up straight. Her face was as blank as when she was with her family, but it was a little bit red. The real Naruto, the boy in the wheelchair, looked at her with a little bit of interest. Yes, Hanada? He had been back in Konoha for a week and knew exactly what he was getting himself into. I finally beat her, she said, her chest swelling with pride. I finally beat my sister at Taijutsu. The blonde boy had noticed that praises made the girl feel better about herself, so he decided to give her one. Well done, Hanada, those few words meant a lot to the girl. She turned red, looked down, and poked a blade of grass with her foot, but she still stood straight, remembering that her teacher liked confidence, even if it was just a little bit. The boy let her have her moment of pride and said, as a reward, you don't have to train today or tomorrow, but your weight seals will still be active. Right on cue, she felt her body sag under the extra 90 pounds. Now sit down, I need to tell you something. The girl woke up from her blush-induced daze and sat on the ground with her legs crossed, looking up at him. First of all, I want to tell you that I've been getting bad news from my spies, she said. Her eyes widened because she didn't know that her partially disabled teacher had spies. Sensei has spies? I didn't realize how cool he was. He watched her pale eyes to see if she would change her mind. When she didn't, he said, it looks like hidden sand and a new shinobi village called Sound have taken over five Konoha patrol stations in the north. She stayed calm, surprised that the normally quiet boy had told her even this much. I don't think this is good for Konoha, considering how many shinobi are there. They are currently waiting to strike tomorrow, which is when I think they will. She whispered, an invasion. Exactly. Teacher, what do you want me to do? I want you to answer that question for yourself, Hanada. She looked at the ground and furrowed her brows as she thought. Then she looked up and said, as a shinobi, it is my duty to protect Konoha. Naruto gave her a small smile, and she nodded firmly, thinking she had answered properly. Yes, it's your job, but you have to keep Konoha safe because it's your home. If Konoha isn't there, you don't have a home, she nodded again. Listen to your superiors and do what you can to help out. If you survive tomorrow, I'll give you a reward and let you into my inner circle. Hanada knew she had to survive the invasion. The person she looked up to, her idol, had trained her and now he was going to tell her more things, making her even more important. I won't let you down sensei. I'm sure you won't. The second thing I want to ask you is about your goals. What are your goals, Hanada? She asked by tilting her head to the side. Tutu should be as strong as you, sensei. Her answer made the blonde seal master pause. I'm flattered by your answer, but every sensei doesn't want his students, or student in your case, to be as strong as him. He wants his students to be stronger than him, greater than him. 
he gave her a few seconds to think about what he had just said. I want you to set your target in the sky and shoot for it, maybe even overshoot it. Again, I'll ask, what do you want to do? Hanada again looked down and pursed her lips in thought, something she had unknowingly learned from Naruto. She thought deeply about her goal and said, I don't want to say my goal is to become a Junin, because Naruto Sensei said he has seals and body traps that could level a battlefield and kill a lot of Junin if he wanted to. I don't want to say I want to become an A-ranked ninja, because if Sensei were to become a ninja, he would be an A-ranked ninja. If I keep beating Hanabi and sparring, I will definitely become the clan leader, but. Even that seems too low. Then her eyes drifted to the side and she saw the Hokage's statue. That's it. She said. She looked at Naruto with anger in her eyes, I will become the Hokage. Here, Naruto gave her a small smile, which she returned. He then reached out and ruffled her hair, saying, that's the sky, Hanada. All you have to do is reach it. Naruto's role as Kayubi's Jinchuriki, as the great beast called him, wasn't as secret as the Sandame hoped. What did I hope for? That the Sandame would finally get something right? Naruto thought, that's funny, and I know it, as he grabbed a sand shinobi by the throat with one of his three silver snake ropes and threw a silver chain with a seal on it at the man's face. When the seal touched the man's head, it changed into the complicated characters for deep sleep. All of the guards that the Hokage thought he had put in place failed because they were caught off guard by the snap genjutsu and the sheer number of attackers. The barrier sphere around the seal master tingled, and he repeated his last move without looking, adding the sand shinobi to the many sleeping shinobi all around him. No blood was shed, he didn't like killing. Yet. His X sign buzzed, and Daku kneeled down in front of him. Naruto-sama, he said. I want you to go help the others fight off the invaders, he said, nodding in appreciation when Daku shot two wooden stacks behind him at two sneaking ninjas. Make sure you're not easily seen. There are no Uchiha who can track you, and the Hyuga are too busy pushing out the snakes. If you see that the K's cage is winning on the roof, help out there, too. Do you understand? Hi, Naruto-sama, he said sharply as he stood up and bowed his master. Mind if I ask what you will be doing, Naruto-sama? Here, Naruto's face showed a hint of a smile. I'm going to work out my legs, he said, flicking his eyes to the sand jinchuriki running around in the ring. Daku nodded and blinked out of sight. He didn't use any jutsu. He was just fast. Naruto got up slowly and rolled his shoulders. Then he suddenly remembered something. He bent over and tapped the right arm of his wheelchair. Teams 8 and 10 were busy getting civilians and school students into an underground bunker on the far east side of Konoha. Hinata told a little girl and her mother that everything was fine. She did this with a light smile on her face. When she felt her weight seals drop all the way, her eyes got a lot bigger. Kami-sama am I flying? She looked at both of her hands and lightly stamped her feet on the ground to make sure she was still standing on both of them. Sensei, you dropped the seals. I'm so happy. Hanada-chan, are you okay? Kiba Inazuka asked her. She looked at him and smiled widely, which was the first time in about a week. She laughed and said, I'm more than fine, Kiba-kun. I feel great. Shino whispered, Hanada-san, as he looked at her with interest. She raised her hand in the air and then let it fall, flapping her arms in a silly way. Then she started doing a strange version of the toad dance. He was at least glad that the civilians and school students were safe inside, so they wouldn't see the Hyuga heiress acting like a fool. What's wrong with you? He asked. I feel so free, Shino-kun. She said as she did a hands-free backflip and a deft spin in the air before landing. Shino was surprised that she didn't make any dust. Even so, Kiba didn't notice. Hanada-chan, snap out of it. This isn't the time to mess around. Just then, there was a huge explosion that shook the ground and threw the team off balance. I don't know about you two, but I'm going to help fight. Akamaru, you in? Bark. The Abarame heir shrugged and looked at Hanada, frowning slightly when he didn't see any visible nerves. This was very different from the Hanada he knew, and she wasn't an illusion, his hive told him. You don't have to, before he could finish, Hanada blurred out of sight. Come, Hanada-san. Where'd she go? yelled Kiba. Shino said, my hive says she went that way, to the center of the village. Since he couldn't see her, he had to depend on his hive to find her. 
Hanada was being chased by the Abarame, which Kiba and his animal partner ran after. When they got to where Shino had lost track of the Hyuga heiress, Shino murmured, Kami-sama. This was because in front of him and his male teammate were the bodies of Sound Shinobi who had been knocked out. Their chests had deep groves right above their hearts, and blood was dripping from the corner of their mouths. Who did this? Asked the dog boy. He was pretty sure he knew how all the Junin fought, since a Chunin couldn't have done this much damage. Shino put his index finger up to his eyes, and a weak bug fell on it. He looked at it for 30 seconds before saying, it was Hanada. Hanada, on the other hand, was in a speeding fury that blurred past enemy shinobi, leaving them nearly dead and not knowing who got by them. She reached out with both hands and hit a San Kanochi in the chest by accident. She wasn't too bothered by the blood because she had officially killed someone before. A strange man who tried to kidnap her while she was training with Naruto. The boy was facing away from the mysterious kidnapper, who landed behind her with a loud thud. She acted before she could think. She threw her fist straight into the person's chest and watched with wide, terrified eyes as life left his eyes and blood pumped onto her hand. She tried to stay calm around Naruto after that to show that it didn't bother her. She didn't notice that the dead body of the thief had turned into a puddle of water. Her Byakugan saw a shinobi training with a kanai on her back. She rolled forward and lifted a sound shinobi so that the kanai cut through his lungs. She turned and glared at the group of sound shinobi who were surrounding her. Looky her boys, we've got a rebellious teen on our hands, the apparent leader sneered. You should have stayed hidden, maybe our master could have used your eyes. He wore the standard clothes for Chunin group leaders and had no distinguishing facial features. You want my eyes, she said, putting up a rock-solid, soft fist. Come get them. The man smiled arrogantly and said, gladly, get her. He was sure that the obvious Genin would turn tail and run, so he was surprised when she did. She hit one of his teammates in the shoulder with lightning speed, and with a sharp uppercut, she broke his jaw. Oops. Who's next? Now the rest of his team was unsure, because that little girl had beaten a Chunin with normal strength in just five seconds. They shook in place and looked nervously at their boss. We've got the numbers advantage, you idiots. He yelled angrily. This seemed to give them a little more courage, so they pulled out their kanai and dove at their opponent. Using her by Kugan, Hanada saw this and laughed at how slowly they seemed to be going. She poked a man in the ribs with a finger that was charged with chakra. The man fell on his opponent and yelled in pain. She burned another opponent with her hands, and the man fell to the ground without any bones. The Hyuga then did a perfect spin to dodge a wave of shuriken, plucking two out of the sky and nailing two Chunin sound shinobi on their foreheads. She went straight for a Chunin and poked him twice in the chest. She dodged a sloppy and tired right hook and then jabbed him again in the chest. The man wheezed and tried another right hook, but it didn't work any better than the first. She moved to the side and gave him a snap kick across the face, which broke his eyeball. Ah. Uh. Oops, she said with a wince. Her all-seeing eyes forewarned her about the coming danger of a barrage of earth release. Mudball landslide, sent to her courtesy of the last remaining Chunin invader, the leader of the dead group and glared at him. You killed all my men. He growled in anger, powering through another set of hand seals. Earth release. Heat-seeking rock balls. The ground around him gurgled and started spitting out fist-sized rocks at the girl. She jumped out of the way of a huge wave and was thrown away by the explosion that followed. It wasn't the biggest explosion she had ever seen, but she wasn't ready for it, stay still. Hanada kept from slapping the attacking balls away, the tiny objects still going a bit too slow for her. She quickly caught a ball and sped towards her attacker. She rammed the exploding ball down the man's wide open mouth while covering her face with her hand as the man's head blew up. She stuck out her tongue in disgust and said, yuck. She looked around and nodded when she was told there would be no trouble. Where do I go now? She asked. Just then, a deep, beastly bellow came from the Chunin exams field. There, it said, and she disappeared again. Naruto didn't think that fighting a sand monster would be this much fun. The boy was running as fast as he could, which was low Chunin speed, away from the violent sand spikes that the mad one-tailed beast holder was shooting at him. Kayubi, who was deep inside Naruto's seal, mumbled, you are having way too much fun, Naruto. He was laughing at his brother's attempts to stake his host. Now that he had listened to the nine tales and started learning Fuenjutsu, Naruto was very happy.
He raised his wrist, and out of a seal on that arm came a hazy blue shield in the shape of a Roman shield. It blocked the sand spikes that were coming at him. When the pain got worse, he dug his feet into the ground and put his hand into a pocket in his loose trousers. He pulled out a piece of paper with a very complicated seal drawn on it. He threw the piece of paper like a shuriken and watched with grim pleasure as the sand covering the case cage's sun turned half into glass in the fire that followed. The boy started to seriously doubt the true loyalty of the Konoha ninja when more than half of the shinobi ran over to protect the sandame, even though they knew he was still fully capable, instead of trying to stop Shukaku and his Jinchuriki, who were like a living natural disaster. Even so, he was glad they weren't there because he didn't want anyone but the people he was fighting to see him. The first trouble he ran into was that there was only one Uchiha, Sasuke, and he was fighting the sand monster pretty well. Before the boy could respond, he knocked him out with a deep sleep silver chain tap to the back of his head. Gara's brother and sister were amazed to see the boy they knew sitting in a wheelchair stand up to the terror of hidden sand. They were starting to doubt Gara's direct order that they stay out of his way. Naruto wore a dark blue and black long-sleeved shirt with black loose trousers. Even though he had to fight through a lot of sand, the shirt was still neat. He flew through three hand seals and said, Ninja Art, Fuinjutsu, Child of Paper Chaos. Almost immediately after the last hand seal, sheets of paper flew out of his sleeves and exploded all over Gara, who was almost in his full sand tanuki form. Gara yelled with wild eyes, I will have your blood. He pumped a lot of chakra into his glass arms to break them, laughed hysterically, and did something Naruto did not expect. He nodded off. Shukaku is back, baby. Woo. The sand monster said as he threw his arms in the air and formed himself out of the sticky sand around the sleeping boy. He looked down at Naruto, who was giving him a light glare. Oh ho. So you're the bug trying to kill me? He said. Run, little rat. Run. He told Naruto as he swung his arm towards him, making a deep grove wherever it went. The boy ran up the wall and stuck himself there. He was thinking of many ways to kill the beast. Naruto sensei. Hanada? He asked his only student, who was calling his name. He had forgotten about his opponent. Shukaku took advantage of this by throwing his arm at Naruto. Naruto was only quick enough to make his blue shield in the shape of a rectangle to block the attack. He was thrown across the field and hit a wall straight on. Dust flew up behind him. Hanada yelled, Sensei. In shock because she didn't expect her sensei to be surprised. Shukaku yelled with joy and took his time to celebrate. The half-crippled boy coughed and waved the dust in the air away from his face. The dust slowly blew away to reveal the Fuinjutsu master in a softly glowing blue ball embedded in the wall. Gotta love seals, he mumbled and turned off the protective blue shell casing around him so he could land on the ground. You're a stubborn little shit, you know that right, the sand tanuki growled and threw his hands at Naruto. Wind release, sand scattering bullets. The sand-based attacks got stronger and rained down on Naruto, who turned on his arm shield to block them. He again threw an exploding seal paper shuriken at the monster and ran to his shocked student when the monster cried out in pain. What are you doing here? He asked calmly, throwing three more paper infernos at Shukaku. I, I came to see what I could do to help, she whispered, keeping her eyes on Tamari and Konkuro, who were ready to help on the other side of the field. Naruto thought quietly about how she could help. He threw three more paper shuriken, which exploded and turned almost the whole body of the beast into glass. I need you to distract the sand beast while I get close to that boy on its forehead, he said, pointing at Gara. I don't know if I can do it, she said with shaky knees. I saw how fast you can run and how hard you can hit, he didn't, he just correctly assumed the weight seals being down would bring those results, you'll be fine, he patted her shoulder to reassure her, before the girl could respond, he spun around to his main opponent and sped over to it, fire release, great fireball jutsu, the arm that had been coming down in a merciless axe chop immediately turned to glass. Hanada woke up quickly and ran to the sand monster. Wind release, great breakthrough. She said, but she wasn't very good at the jutsu, as the wind that came out of her mouth and cut off Shukaku's other sand arm showed. Naruto had just taught her how to use jutsu a week before. He kept telling her that her taijutsu would not be enough to beat everyone. Even though she only knew one jutsu, she was more comfortable with wind jutsu even though water was her passion. Naruto told her he would show her more wind and water jutsu. She broke through the seals again and cut off half of the sand monster's face. 
she came close to hitting Gara, which made the monster even matter and cause it to forget about Naruto. Fire release. A great fireball jutsu. Letting the wind out. What a breakthrough. When the two strikes met in the middle, the wind jutsu cut through the fire and shot out a very hot gas spike that hit Shukaku in the chest. The result happened right away. Glass began to break and web from his chest to his arms and down to where his feet should have been. Naruto used his frantic fear to run up its body and hold on with his chakra as he went. When he got to Gara, he pulled back his hand and hit the sleeping boy hard on the face. Thwack. The noise stopped all around the arena, and there was quiet. No one in the arena dared to breathe. He hit him, Tamari whispered, and her knees felt weak. Konkuro just nodded. The sand monster's body fell to the ground, waking up their younger brother. Naruto grabbed the boy by the arm and jumped away, saving the sleepy boy from the glass shards below. He put the boy down next to a wall and sat down to catch his breath. Hanada knelt down next to him and asked him in a wordless way, are you okay? I'm fine, just a little tired. He waved away her worries, his shield came to life, and he held it to Gara's neck as he tried to sneak away, all the while not taking his eyes off the sand siblings. Gara asked in a quiet, shaking voice, who are you? He couldn't move or the edge of his shield would cut into his neck. You can call me Naruto, he said softly to Gara as he sat up. Don't come any closer, or you'll lose a brother, he told Tamari and Konkuro. They put their hands up to show that they weren't going to do anything. I can see those strings, puppet master, don't even think about it, he said again as he moved his shield closer to the one-tailed Jinchuriki's neck. Tamari looked at her younger brother and Konkuro. Now, give me a reason not to kill all of you, right here, right now, she said. Tamari stood up, and Hanada stood behind him, glaring icily at the two. When neither of them knew what to say, he just shrugged and said, I thought so. He raised his hand to put it through Gara's neck, but Konkuro yelled, no. Naruto raised an eyebrow in surprise and said, wait. We have information. Just. Don't do anything hasty. Naruto turned his head to the side and asked, what kind of information? He looked so innocent that Tamari would have swooned if her brother wasn't under the knife. The reasons were invading kind of information, he said, ignoring his sister's sharp look. Naruto nodded for him to continue, and he said, Orochimaru of the Sanin somehow convinced our father, the case cage, that Konoha was the enemy and that by invading here, we would expand sand and make it wealthier. He didn't want to listen to reason. That's enough for me, he said as he pulled his shield away from Gara and stepped back, letting his brothers worry about him. Your brother and sister really care about you, San Shinobi San, releasing confidential information just so they can keep you alive. Now that's love, he said as he turned to leave. Gara shouted, how are you so strong? You're not supposed to be able to walk. I'm strong because I have something worth living for, he said, referring to Wave and everyone, including Hanada, who counted on him without knowing it. The seal on his belly tingled, and he looked up to the ceiling. He could feel the fight going on above. He waved for Hanada to go help secure the borders. Next time, San Shinobi San, use your own strength before you use someone else's. That's what I did. He ran out of the arena just as they realized what he meant. He has a beast with tails, Konkuro muttered. And he didn't use it, concluded Tamari. Gara looked at his brothers and sisters, and his shoulders slumped from years of stress, pain, and heartbreak. Tamari. Konkuro. I'm sorry, he said. Maybe if he learned to love them again, he could be as strong as that blonde boy. Even more than they loved him, love them. Just as Daku left Naruto. The top. Naruto's dark half hummed to himself as he watched the sound 4 bring up barrier seals. He poked it, and when it started to smoke, he pulled his hand back. His hand started to heal right away. He wasn't the only one trying to get through the seal. The Anbu guards of Sandame were also trying. The seal kept Orochimaru of the Sanin from getting to the Sandame. At the time, Orochimaru was giving a long speech about how Hiruzen had made a mistake by not making him the Hokage and how he was going to destroy the leaf since he couldn't have it for himself. It went on for much longer, but you get the idea. Daku rolled his red fox-like eyes and thought about what he knew about seals. Unfortunately, he couldn't think of a way to stop a four-point barrier seal, which was much stronger than a regular barrier seal. So, he used a powerful spell to change himself into an Anbu Shinobi with a blank face and walked quickly to one of the points on the barrier. He scratched his chin, 
pulled his hand back to make a stone stake, and fired it right at Hirobo's feet. This broke Hirobo's concentration and let Daku get inside much faster than the other ninja. Another one of your toys, Orochimaru? Hirazan glared at the mysterious Daku and growled, Who are you? When he told Orochimaru to look, he stopped his rant and did so. Sandame-sama, I am here to help you, Daku responded by shoulder tackling Orochimaru to the ground and stabbing him clean through the head with a stone stake. When the man melted into a mud puddle, he hummed sourly. You're fast, I'll give you that, Orochimaru said from behind Daku as he brought his leg down for a skull-shattering axe kick. But the stranger turned around much faster than he expected and crossed his arms, taking the full force of the legendary snake sawning kick with his wood, stone, and seal-enhanced arms. He didn't even wince when his arm broke. Instead, he moved his feet under Orochimaru, and as expected, the man jumped over it. He used the split second that the man was in the air to snap his arm back together. Endurable. Do you really not want to join my group? The man landed in front of the stranger and smiled, there's always a place for someone with your skills. Daku didn't even give the man a chance to answer. He pointed his arms at the snake summoner and started shooting at him. The pale man spit out his grass cutter sword and started hacking at the annoying projectiles. The Sandame's adamantium bow staff hit him in the head, and his head fell into his shoulders. Again, he and his sword turned into a puddle of mud. Two against one doesn't seem fair, let me even the odds, the snake sawning said from behind the Sandame, making the older Serutobi swing his legs behind him and watch as Orochimaru slithered back like a snake and went through a set of hand seals. Summoning. In pure world reincarnation, he hissed as he finished the seals and three wooden coffins shot out of the ground next to him. When the lids flew off, Hirazan gasped in horror and told Orochimaru, you've really gone too far. In response, the pale man said, you forced me down this path, so it's only fair that you die with your ancestors. One by one, the people in the coffins got up and walked out. Hirazan? Man, you got old. Hashirama exclaimed. The calmer of the two, Tobarama, looked around and said, we shouldn't be alive. My jutsu has reached its peak? When he looked to his left and saw a pile of ash on the ground, he snorted and said, not too perfect, it seems. Orochimaru jammed seal kanai into the back of their necks while they were busy. This made their eyes glaze over. When he said, kill your sensei and that other person, he didn't think about the fact that the dead bodies he brought back to life weren't at full strength. Daku split into four pieces and moved quickly towards Hashirama, while Tobarama, the Nidame, ran to his student. The fight between the first Hokage and Naruto's loyal shadow was like watching the sun reflect off a kanai. Most people would say that the speed with which both shinobi were trading blows, blocks, and counters would be enough to create power. Hashirama threw punches at Daku's head, and the dark shadow raised his arms to catch them all. He fixed them right away then twisted the wood-style user's fist while it was in the air and pulled it roughly out of his socket. He didn't stop. He smashed the dead man's head in with an axe kick to the cheek, then did it again and again, sending the man back and making him a little dizzy. Hashirama caught a leg before it could hit him in the face again, but he didn't expect Daku's clones to punch him in the face and ribs with chakra. He knew that if he were still alive, he would be in a lot of pain. The clones worked together to break the Hokage's defenses, but they didn't slow him down. The dead man blinked in shock when the stranger's hands turned into sharp stone stakes and shot them between his eyes, pushing him back even more. Daku ran up silently to the confused man and gave him a wicked rising knee kick that hit the dead Hokage's chin. This sent the man flying into the air. The clones took advantage of this by jumping up and pushing him into the wall. The fight is over. Hirazan looked like he was thinking the same thing. He moved away from some water release drilling water bullets, and used his unbreakable iron staff to hit his sensei in the chin. When Orochimaru came up behind him and stuck his sword through his back and out his stomach, he grunted in pain. Orochimaru said, I win, sensei, but he didn't see that the Daku clones had also thrown the Nidame into the barrier, killing him and sending his soul back to the afterlife. Blood came out of the Sandame's mouth and ears as the poison from the grass cutter leaked into his body through his spine. His eyes were too heavy to stay open, but his subordinates kept yelling at him to keep fighting. He was having a harder time breathing, so he tried to slow down his heartbeat to slow down the poisons. Die, sensei. Just die, a student who had failed to learn from him hissed to him in a soothing way. The Sanin's neck was grabbed by a rough hand, and he was thrown away while still holding his sword. 
The man quickly got to his feet and glared at Daku before smiling and saying, there's nothing you can do to save him, stranger. His immune system is too weak to fight my poisons. He will die today, Daku said as he gently put the old Hokage on the ground while keeping an eye on Orochimaru. Unfortunately, I won't be there to see it. He swallowed his sword and whistled for his sound 4 to drop the barrier. When you're ready to join me, all you have to do is call. He then turned into a muddy goo on the ground and the sound 4 faded out of sight using Shunshin. So that's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you, see you all in my next video.